Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser, here with Medical Paper Reviews. It's always good to look at the medical literature and you know see what are some significant articles and what they say. If anybody wants to know what I've been doing, so one of the things I've been doing is, you know, I have been writing again and editing uh, scientific papers. We do feel that it's important as a medical clinic, caring medical and the Hauser Neck Center that we do write scientific papers of the findings that we have and hopefully over time that we can make ligamentous joint instability a common condition that doctors look for when they ha when a person has joint pain and when they have a neurologic condition that nobody can seem to find the cause and you guys know from other videos that I've made that when you you have joint instability in the neck, it can cause a lot, a lot of problems, including stomach problems, heart problems, brain problems. Recently, our most recent paper is entitled Lumbar Instability as an Etiology of Low Back Pain and its Treatment by Prolotherapy Review. Thank you to Danielle, my associate, Dave Wasnicka, and uh, Ben and Barbara for their help in the article. The article is recently published in a peer-reviewed journal, so it did take a long time to get the article published. You know, so anybody with chronic low back pain, I mean, you've got to think that you might have lumbar instability. Now, lumbar instability, sometimes you can't objectively find it. You might say, well, geez, you guys have motion x-rays of the neck. Why can you find that, but you can't find lumbar instability? Well, you got to realize we don't have really big muscles in the neck, right? So in the neck, the primary stabilizer of the joint is going to be the ligaments because the ligaments connect the bones together. In the lower back or to support the lower back because the lower back takes the whole weight of the body where the neck takes the weight of the head. So the lower back to support the weight, you have what? The abdominal muscles and the low back muscles. So. A person could have significant lumbar instability. In other words, they have definite capsular ligament injury in this L4-5, L5-S1, L3-L4. But when you do flexion x-rays and extension x-rays, you don't necessarily see the subluxation. You don't actually see the subluxation. So, and you might say, well, how can I diagnose it then? Well, you'd actually have to numb the muscles of the back. So that's why there's a lot of false negatives. So if you've had a flexion MRI and extension MRI and didn't show any instability, I'm telling you, if you have chronic stiffness of your lower back, it's probably because the muscles are tightening all the time because they're trying to limit the excessive motion of the vertebrae so you don't injure a nerve. You know, so there's a thing called the ligament muscular reflex when you have ligament injury, such as capsular ligament injury. So I guess I should look at one of the figures in the book. It shows all the various ligaments, you know, all the various ligaments in the lower back or some of the ligaments. And the fulcrum of motion in the lower back and the spine is the facet joints and the facet joints have these capsular ligaments. So those are the ligaments that we primarily treat with prolotherapy and that's just an illustration of it. So those are the most important ligaments to treat with prolotherapy. The article, again, lumbar instability as an etiology of low back pain. So it goes through how when you get ligament injury of the lower back, is specifically the facet joints what first occurs is arthritis in the facet joint because when you have ligament injury in the facet joint, though, those, those bones, they move excessively and the pressures caused by the excessive motion will break down the cartilage and bone spurs occur to dis disperse the pressure plus stabilize the joint because the body has three mechanisms to stabilize the joint. It has muscle tension, right? Muscle tension from ligament injury will stabilize the joint temporarily. The joint can swell. That's where some doctors inject steroids into there. I wouldn't recommend steroid shots into the uh, facet joints, but some doctors do it because you do get temporary pain relief. 
but because it blocks pain, I don't think it's a good idea because you need to know the pain's there so you won't go play tennis. You know, because if you have instability and you're playing tennis because you got a steroid shot or you take anti-inflammatories, you're just going to make the condition worse. So we would recommend that you get the ligaments tightened with prolotherapy and then you're addressing the root cause of the arthritis in the facet joint. If the facet joint motion continues, 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 then eventually you're going to get disc degeneration, right? Why does disc degeneration occur? Because there's too much motion of the bones and the discs are between the bones. And always think of this, the discs are in the front. So if a person had pain from a disc, you've got to explain why do you have pain in the back? The ligaments are in the back. So the cervical spine and the lumbar spine are basically the same in the sense that they both have a lordotic curve. They have, they have the same lordotic curve, same exact lordotic curve. So then what is causing the ligament injury in the lower back and the neck if somebody didn't have a car accident or fall off a bike or something? Well, it's the same process. I just call it slouching, right? Because slouching, like slouching of the neck is you're looking down, looking down, looking down. So I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna turn this. So if I'm using my computer and I go like this, I go like this, I have a nice lordotic curve. Like in other words, I'm lifted my chest, then I have a lordotic curve. If I go back in the seat right now, I'm slouching, you know, now I'm using the computer, I'm causing ligament injury in my neck, now I'm causing ligament injury in my back. So the number one cause, you know, really is slouching. So in the paper, in the results section of the paper, prolotherapy and PRP for facet joint pain, disc degeneration as a consequence of lumbar instability. And again, looking at the various results with prolotherapy or PRP for disc degenerative pain. There's also a section on sacroiliac mediated pain. And you'll see the results at one year. So in other words, the people got so many prolotherapies or PRP procedures, you know, the results were anywhere from 70% pain relief to 90 plus percent pain relief, um, you know, at one year. So you might say, well, that doesn't seem that good. Well, for chronic low back pain, it actually is very good. Just know that some of the papers, they didn't do prolotherapy like how we do prolotherapy, but when you're writing a scientific paper, you got to, you got to, talk about other people's results too. So some of the doctors just did like PRP into the facet joint. So 70% pain relief with just treating the facet joint, not all the other ligaments where with comprehensive Hemel Hackett Hauser prolotherapy where you're doing 50, 60, 70 shots over the whole ligament mesh, well, you're likely to get more pain relief than the 70% 80%, 90%, so just be aware of that. But I feel it's a good overview article and I hope some of you will check it out. Thank you for watching.